this is an object that originates from several gods. That was part of the collection. It should go back there. Giovanna Castigliani, the performer, uh, well, after having uh, uh, drank a bit of wine, of course I could do it for five minutes, but now no. I've fallen in love with this because it's like going back to being a kid. I mean, this was my cigarette when I was a kid since my dad was always smoking. I used to play with these. And therefore, uh, well, this project was very interesting, and I liked it so much, this relation that you create uh, with uh, the unknown user who would use this. You never know who will buy these projects that you do and that you love, and uh, uh, you always follow until the end. Rather, in this case, the fun thing is that both the kid, as well as the 18 years old man, for sure he wants to clean the house and second I mean there's no trick you have to do it and this is a project well of course it's a poof that it's a vacuum cleaner the idea is looking around at what happens around the house well who has a vacuum cleaner well at the end you have to put it back somewhere right this is hiding emphasizing at the same time so on the presence of the object well this was automatically hidden this is a logic of hiding emphasizing that very frequently i have used in my projects and well the idea of of course, how Giovanna was saying, well, this is a vacuum cleaner. You have this ball that follows you because it's suspended by the air which enters on one side and exits on the other. Clear, right? Well, I liked uh, the idea of managing and using the last breath of this vacuum cleaner. So he was continuing to uh, find a way to use this. I was playing with my uh, nephew and we threw uh, a ball on this vacuum cleaner and he saw this ball that just uh, did this strange movement and fell on the floor. What happens? Well, in that case, yes, I said, hey, what a nice idea. Not because, because I was already thinking of something like that. And therefore, in this sense, I just reconnect myself to what we were saying before of the inspiration. It's always a work of research. There's a nice book of where do ideas originate in these moments where you have already elaborated a few things and then you have uh, that bit where everything comes back and you're like, hey, there's a project. This is the Nomad office. It's a hybrid project as well because um, it's a project that goes between an environment and uh, an object. It's a project for industrial spaces which reasons with the same kind of technology and build with uh, um, different environments that could actually be from the Abitacolo of Munari to Lorenzo Damiano. Very good. He has done something like 100 projects or more. Projects, ideas. He has done very, very many in his career, in his 20 years of work. I'm sorry to tell you and remind you that you're a bit old. And he has done a selection, but the game now could be that of seeing what has been left out and that was very strong and very intelligent. Very many things have been left out. I want you. This is the moment of the questions, but uh, at least my students, they are forced 
to ask questions. Or else we will continue for five more minutes. Or... Of course, a question, you get a better grade, right? So go ahead, ask these questions. Uh, your grade. No, I believe that uh, his uh, design, the fact that he looks at different objects, I took a few notes, uh, he, he has uh, a view that is just turning things around, he has the particularity of like, this match, and he gives you like the surprise with intelligence, just like he used to do, uh, like Achille Castiglione used to do, because it's not that limited gesture. It's an intelligence which is imprinted on the objects, just like here. Where is the project? Well, of course there is a project, but it's invisible. This is why probably the companies have a hard time in understanding all these things and other material, but maybe they understand better. If you add this thing, but that just turns around the entire matter they might say oh well we don't know we think about it no thank you there you really need to understand well you're a designer of like a patent office this is not an offense actually well the designer has to do like an up and down between his office his studio and his patent and the patent office where you deposit the patent for your idea, your invention. Curiosity before, and uh, if you're not curious, just forget about it. And then, uh, and uh, this is what Achille used to say. And uh, you have to go uh, understand the gestures and solve those with simplicity, without building anything, emphasizing and underlining structures, never hiding anything. And also, Kile Castiglione used to love to show all these things in their project. The project is there, there's no instructions for your objects, they speak to you. You know exactly what you have in front of you. I remember that when I was with Achille Castiglione and I asked him several questions and he said, but hey, sorry, I asked a banal question, like, how do you understand when you need a stop? Which is not so banal. And he said, saying, hey, and that's it. And that's it. I don't know. Do you, are there any questions? You can ask questions to Joanna if you want. My students. Or else I just call you, okay? Twenty-eight. What surprises me is the spontaneity of these questions. Okay, I really like the, the object for green. I don't remember the name before. Uh, for uh, for? I, I, my, I, my question was just very simple. It's just you, how you how you how you, how you discover that this is media. You were painting. You, you were making at the action. What project are you talking about? It was in really clear. <laughs> Come, come hai fatto a pensare a un'idea del genere? Cioè, stavi pitturando casa, stavi... oppure da dove è nata? Torno nel gabbiotto, scusa. Well, working a lot with my hands, I mean... Well, uh, these are all experiences that we all have uh, worked in. And therefore thinking that at a certain point I wanted to use a brush 
And what were the problems related to that? See, there's the idea, and it turns on. Well, probably this is uh, one of the ideas. Besides the fact that it's the first one, it's one of the oldest, and so on because I'm uh, definitely very affectionate to this because it's one of my first ideas. But it reminds me a nice period of my life. But I believe that it's the nicest thing to see an old project and say, hey, I'd redo it the same way. That's nice. Because, of course, sometimes I just um, look at some other projects and I think and I say, well, there was once where there was a period where I had done so many without really concluding anything. And I used to say, oh my God, these people are not understanding. They're not, I'm, I'm not winning this competition. It's the usual friends that always, but then I realized looking at the objects that I was presenting, well, they should actually send me on a, like a desert island I mean, the things that I was presenting were horrible. To go back to this, rather, it's very nice, actually, to see some of your projects that you see years from when you have designed them, and you're happy you've designed them. Other questions? We don't really have to force you guys to questions, but almost. Ah. A 30 for her. 30, who wants a 30? The project of the bench and made in marble. Have you done some trials? Also because I have never seen anything like that with marble in that way. You have said like the fear of sitting on it and it breaks. Well, I wanted to understand how did you understand that that was the curve? What was the approach that you have had with the material? Well, the approach is very simple. Well, you have to put bricks. Well, I believe there are some projects that you need to do with the material in your hands. And therefore, it originates with taking these bricks, we put them on the floor, starting from a specific height, with the floor that was basically the end, right, of the curve, and just slowly rising the bricks. Before they were too big, too tall, we removed, got lower and lower, because of course, uh, it would start, you would start to feel some cracks, some noises that would suggest not to exaggerate. Rather, that was a flexion that was, had to be certain. And therefore, starting from this system, we have uh, uh, done some wooden molds to recreate the structure. Of course, there was a project that was aesthetic at the same time, right? Going at the same speed with this. And then we created this wooden sort of structure. And then we have put an MDF. And we have seen it worked. And then we, uh, the first time we realized that we had to modify the curve, we modified that, and we'll, of course, put all the information together, and the bench was created. Well, actually, I went to them, and they showed me a few things. They showed me several things, several possibilities that could actually uh, be done with marble. And then they showed me retroilluminated marble. And at a certain point, they showed me this sheet of marble. And they said, ah, oh, this can be folded. But uh, they couldn't really find an application for that because they realized the possibility of uh, doing these curves when it's cut and they have to transport it. 
and they realize that this is a great problem. But after they said, but maybe it could be used in some way. And therefore, they could not manage how this could be done. And therefore, at the end, they've done these objects. But what happens? Well, these objects originated also from the curiosity of going to search for different things. And if you don't go in the right places, going and just spending time in a studio, well, you will not find the things that uh, you need to do research, you need to experiment. Uh, An artisan of marble uh, sees marble every day and he considers these problems. I mean, a problem for someone can be an actual strength for a project for someone else.